Welcome back to my channel and part two of making my pink petticoat for my Sakizo Cinderella cosplay. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, I had hem issues on this. I also needed to tighten the top and I was working on a decorative ruffle. So we are gonna address all of those issues in today's video and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> The first adjustment that I made was removing these hooks. I actually decided to create a second set of eyes about an inch in on each side of this petticoat so that I could um, adjust the size depending on my size at the time. And that size adjustment changed and helped a lot. Then I just went ahead and took up that bottom hem by two full inches and there are points on the petticoat where you can see the white ruffle from the penne, but I made sure to place my decorative ruffle at a point where you wouldn't see the white ruffle but I wasn't still dragging half of my petticoat on the floor. Now I could start my decorative ruffle and to do this I cut eight 55 inch by 20 inch pieces of silk dupioni. I'm making this decorative ruffle to kind of emulate those pink ruffles that you see at the bottom of this design. There's several of them and so I'm, since I don't have a picture of that garment, I will just do the best that I can. Once my strips were cut, I sewed all of them together to make one long giant strip and then I um, rolled them each top and bottom of them. I rolled by half an inch um, so that I had clean edges on the top and bottom. So now I thought at the very beginning of doing this that I was going to do a smocked type gathering look with the arrowhead smocking. I saw Angela Clayton do this in a video and I thought it looked really great. And I thought like if I do that, I could skip putting a trim on it, like a decorative trim. But as I started smocking it down, it did not look how I wanted it to look. So I marked out two full pieces, so about 108 inches of this, um, this piece of silk. And I smocked all 108 of it down and it just was not giving me the look that I wanted. So I scrapped that and uh, we'll talk about what I did instead. After spending an entire night unpicking all 108 inches of smocking, I went ahead and I pressed everything out. I tried to use a damp towel to get the um, markings out so there were no more markings. And then I went ahead and um, pressed three inches down. Uh, or no, I went with two and a half inches of the top. I pressed it inward and then I did the gather stitch that um, you use in like 18th century trim. So I marked every 12 inches with a pin and then I had my little six inch ruler with me and I just, um, you know, I hand gathered these down. Um, and this took me a few nights to do and then I pressed it open and it was it, it was gathered exactly the way that I had intended from the beginning so I kind of wish I had done this from the beginning but hey you live and you learn so now it was time to press this open and this is when I kind of started to like make the realization that this was the best choice from the beginning not only did it um, ruffle down the amount that I really wanted it to, but it also made for a great space to do some more decorative work on this. So I ironed this all the way down all, I don't know how many inches this is at this time, I think like 500 or something. Um, and then we will be adding a trim next. To add my trim, I started by just pinning my trim all the way across this entire piece, this entire gathered piece, to make sure I had enough. Um, I purchased the trim uh, kind of separately from this. I bought it when I was in Rhode Island last year, and I think it was like something like 10 cents a yard, and I bought like a couple dollars worth just because I didn't know what I was going to use it for. Um, so how I actually ta tackled sewing this on was I ta I did a couching stitch around every like fourth piece. Um, if you can see there's little arches and I would just go in and on like the top I would do one and then I would count four away and do another. Maybe it was three, but basically I just did a couch stitch 
alternating from the top half of this to the bottom half of this and it seemed to stay pretty well it did take me a, quite a bit of time to sew it down but again like these are the types of things I don't mind spending my time on I really love this part and it's kind of crazy how well the pinks match um, I was really shocked again because like I purchased these this this trim separately from this fabric once my trim was on it was time to add beads and I basically did um, every third like half circle I would add one of these pearls um, I'll explain in the next clip what I should have done um, but basically what I did here was um, I would just kind of sew it through twice so I would place the pearl and then I would bring my needle up go through the pearl bring it down and then do that all over again this is because if for some reason something ever happened where one of these got clipped it would be just a little bit less likely for um, the pearl to fall out uh, and I think I used around 300 pearls for this and these purple pearls were also another thing I had in my stash basically when I started planning to make this version of Sakiz uh, of like Sakizo Cinderella I spent a good like four or five months just kind of hoarding things that I thought would match the color palette and then like once I like solidified the actual silk um, I just got very lucky that a lot of the things I had purchased actually lined up with the things that I were I, I had pre-purchased so it was just real lucky so now it's time to actually pin the um, like ruffle detail part to the actual petticoat. Um, I do this by, I started at the same side seam that I've done all of the pieces and I just kind of work my way around. Um, and basically at this point I'm trying to pin it um, high enough above that line that you see to where no white petticoat underneath is shown but then also so that um, it lines up pretty well with the pink petticoat doesn't hit the floor things like that I want to take into consideration how much time I spent taking in those hems and um, I don't want to have to take up another hem so I try really hard to to keep things lined up with that the final step was to sew this down and this is actually where I realized I could have probably sewn my beads on while sewing this down um, the method I used once again to kind of sew this down was every bead space there was I did a couching stitch right next to it um, and so if I would have thought about this before I could have sewn down my bead while sewing this down and it would have um, skipped an entire step of hand sewing but I didn't really think about that when I was adding the beads and it probably will be for the best because there's less pressure on the beads but still I just realized this as I was sewing it down and I was like dang it I could have done two at one oh well and here is the finished petticoat with trim detail and all I am so pleasantly surprised with how this came and turned out I think it adds just the right amount of fluff um, in between my petticoat and my underskirt and I also just think it's got so many pretty ruffles I love adding details to garments that aren't going to be seen because it just makes wearing it feel so special and I just feel so extra and now for the walk test this is probably my favorite part um, some things that I still need to adjust is I need to actually take in the second eyelets just a little bit more on one side and then I also need to create split bum pads to go under this but otherwise I'm gonna call this garment done I am so happy with how this turned out I really really love the shape of this gown so far the shape of this dress and um, the next time we do a fitting I'll probably do it with the corset I'll be wearing and not my stays since this is not a historically accurate project um, my stays are just something I've been wearing because they've been out but there is a decorative corset that I wear with this instead um, and that is all for today's video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel comment below tell me what you're working on and um, yeah don't forget if you would like to support my art you can head on over to patreon and I will see you in the next video happy sewing